Hello, how are you doing? In the context of LLMs and tools, have you heard the term MCP, but you're not quite sure you know exactly what this is? Well, if so, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I will quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. Model Context Protocol, or MCP for short, standardizes how context is structured and passed to large language models by organizing inputs into clearly defined sections like system instructions, user input, tools, and memory. It also standardizes how tools are described, invoked, and how their outputs are reintegrated into the next model prompt. This enables consistent, interpretable, interoperable interactions across LLM-based systems. Let me describe the components defined in an MCP system. First is the MCP host. Think of this as the IDE or chat front end. Next is the MCP client. Think of this as living in the MCP host and as providing the connection to the MCP server. Each MCP client is connected to one MCP server. Your MCP host can have multiple MCP clients, each connecting to different MCP servers. Next after this is the MCP server. The MCP server handles the generation of structured context, memory, and tool invocation. The MCP server makes the actual calls to tools such as databases, APIs, file systems, etc. And finally, we have the LLM. The LLM interacts with the MCP host by receiving prompts and providing responses. The structure and format of these prompts and responses are defined by the MCP standard. To help you see how all these components work together, let's see step-by-step -step a typical user MCP LLM workflow. In step one, the user interacts with the MCP host. Again, the host could be a chat UI, a voice assistant, or an IDE. In our example, the user asks a question such as, what's the weather like in Austin? In step two, the MCP host collects a history for all the previous user to LLM interactions. This is also referred to as memory. Additionally, the MCP host gets a list of the available tools from the MCP server. In my example, I'm showing one MCP server, but for your use case, just know you could have more than one. In step three, the MCP host prompts the LLM. In step four, the LLM receives and parses the prompt. In this example, the LLM recognizes the need to call the weather tool for the city of Austin. At this point, the LLM returns a response to the MCP host indicating that this weather tool should be invoked with the input parameter of Austin. In step five, the MCP host forwards the tool execution request to the MCP server. The MCP server does the actual work and calls the actual weather tool with the parameter of Austin. At this point, the MCP server gets back the actual weather tool response and next, the MCP server replies back to the MCP host with the actual weather tool results. Now in step six, the MCP host sends the results of the tool call back to the LLM in this second round of interaction. In step seven, the LLM receives the tool results and generates a final human readable response. It's currently 85 degrees Fahrenheit and partly cloudy in Austin. The LLM sends this natural length response back to the MCP host. And in step eight, the MCP host receives the LLM's final response and routes the final message back to the user who sees the final answer. So why is everyone so excited about MCP? I mean, this type of workflow has been available for a while now, right? I myself have done videos on generic tools and function calling and the workflows are similar. So why is everyone so excited about this? Well, the reason everyone's excited is that this is a standard, and it's a standard that is quickly getting adoption across the community. Think of MCP 
is like a universal USB standard, but for interacting with LLMs, contexts, and tools. So who are the big players getting on the MCP bandwagon? Well, as of April 2025, Anthropic, who authored this standard, along with OpenAI and Google, have announced support for MCP. MCP compatible tools are being built by tool providers and being made available to the development community. More and more MCP servers are popping up for platforms like Slack, GitHub, Google Drive, Jira, Firecrawl, and plenty of others. And so when you're building your AI agentic systems, you won't have to create all these tool integrations yourself. Instead, you'll be able to plug into this growing library of pre-built MCP servers and be able to focus more on your specific use case. So in short, MCP creates a standard context structure and format for prompts, tools, and memory that is being supported across a growing list of LLM and tool providers, simplifying AI engineering and system design for you. With this standardization, you'll be able to develop your own AI systems around the standard and know that you'll be able to plug and play with different LLMs and tool providers in the future. Okay, so let me know what you think of MCP. Do you think you might use MCP on your next AI engineering project? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. I wanna hear what you think about this topic. Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with all the other business playlists, are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology and we're all excited about all the innovation with the cloud and machine learning AI. But don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing. Get out and move your body. And if you do, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear about this also. And with that, have a great day. Thanks.